Hello everyone. So in the last class we have seen about the arcing grounds and we have seen Peterson coil grounding. So how this arcing grounds and Peterson coil grounding will increases the voltage or we have seen how the over voltage will going to be caused because of the arcing grounds and Peterson coil grounding we have seen in the last class. And today we are going to see about the lightning, how this lightning is going to be happens and how the clouds are going to be forms, how the thunders are going to be forms, how the lightning falls on the transmission lines, what are the harmful effects of this lightning we will see today. So here if you see the learning objectives of this lecture, the first one is to understand the lightning discharge and to understand the types of lightning strokes and to understand the harmful effects of the lightning. What are the different types of lightning strokes are there? How this lightning will affect the transmission lines and power system we will see today. So here if you see the lightning, lightning is an external cause of the over voltage. So in the last class we have seen what are the internal causes of over voltages. So here internal causes are nothing but which will cause the over voltage due to the internal operation of the power system. So due to the switching operations, due to the arcing rounds and due to the resonance, there are different cases are there which will cause or which will cause for the increasing of the over voltages in the power system due to the internal operation of the power system. But here the only one thing which is the external cause which will increase for the over voltage, which will increase the over voltages, which will increase the voltages, right. So here the lightning, what is actually the lightning? I am saying that lightning is nothing but it is a electric discharge, that electric discharge is going to be done between the clouds or between the cloud and earth or between the charge centers of the same cloud is known as lightning. So here the lightning what we are saying is it is in a huge spark and takes place when the clouds are charged to such a high potential either it may be a positive charge or it may be a negative charge with respect to earth or with respect to the neighboring cloud, the dielectric strength of the neighboring medium is going to be discharged or destroyed neighboring medium, the dielectric strength of the neighboring medium is going to be destroyed. So here whatever the dielectric medium which we are containing between the earth and cloud is air, that dielectric strength of the neighboring medium means that is air, that air dielectric strength is going to be destroyed and that lightning is going to be reaches towards the earth, so that is lightning. So here I am saying that the clouds are going to be charges. So how these clouds are going to be forms first? How these clouds are going to be contains a charge? And how these clouds will discharge and how the thunders are going to be forms and how lightning is going to be reaches to the earth we will see. So first we will see how the clouds are going to be forms. So here there are many theories, several theories will explain about the formation of the clouds the most accepted theory we will see now. So here the uprush movement of the water from the warm moisturized water, whatever I am saying here, the uprush movement of the warm moisture from the earth towards the sky. So here the movement of this uprush movement of warm moisture towards the sky and there is a friction between the and there is a friction between the air and uprush movement of that water or warm moisture. So there is a friction is going to be happens that will forms the charges or that will forms the tiny particles of the charge. So if that is going to be forms the charges, so when the when these drops of water, when these drops of water are formed, so the larger drops of water will contain the positively charged that means on the clouds the whatever the larger drops of water will contain a positive charge and smaller drops of water will contain or tiny particles of this water the smaller drops of tiny particles of this water will contain negatively charged. So when these drops of water accumulate together in the sky when these tiny particles of the or drops of water contains or accumulate together, then they are going to forms a cloud. 
then they are going to forms a cloud. So, that cloud may contain a positive charge or negative charge that depends upon the tiny particles of that water. So, here if that water contains uh, that large drops of water will forms on the cloud that means that will forms a positively charged cloud. If that cloud contains a smaller particles of that drops of water then that will forms negative charge that means negatively charged cloud is going to be forms. So, here if that charged clouds are going to be increases their potential to such a high potential then they are going to be discharged. That discharge is may happens between the clouds between the clouds or between the cloud and earth or between the same cloud the charge centers of the same cloud. So, that discharge of this charge on the clouds in between the clouds or in between the cloud and earth we are calling that as a lightning. So, when this lightning is going to be happens there is a spark is going to be present. So, that spark around that spark. So, around that spark we are going to have the air. So, that air pushes this spark front and back and that moment of this spark will we consider as a thunder. So, with an eye if you see with our eye if you see that will form as a thunder and that thunder will contains or with will accompanies with the lightning with having higher voltage that will reaches towards the earth and when this reaches towards the earth it will going to be falls on the tallest object. So, the tallest object of the power system is transmission lines on the transmission lines this lightning is going to be false. So, if you are not going to provide the proper protection against this lightning then what happens means that traveling that lightning may cause the damage to the transmission line. So, if you see the important points about this lightning discharge. So, here lightning discharge usually appears to the eye of a person as a single flash it is in reality it is made up of number of separate strokes that travel down a same path down the same path. The interval between them varies from 0 0.0005 to 0 0.5 seconds that means the moment of the sub number of separate strokes is only between 0 0.0005 to 0 0.5 seconds. So, each separate stroke starts from a downward leader from the cloud. So, here it has been found that 87 percentage of the lightning strokes which are result from negatively charged clouds. So, these negatively charged clouds are going to be forms because of the smaller drops of water right. If the smaller drops of water accumulate together will forms a negatively charged clouds and if you are having the positively charged clouds. So, that positively charged clouds means how this positively charged clouds are going to be forms means larger drops of water will accumulate together will forms a larger <laughs> drops of water will accumulate together will forms a positively charged clouds and only 13 percentage of this positively charged clouds will cause for the lightning strokes. And the next one is it has been estimated that throughout the world there are about 100 lightning strokes occurs per second. Per second we are having only 100 lightning strokes throughout the world if we consider. And here the lightning discharge will have the currents of in the range of 10 kilo amps to 90 kilo amps and the voltage in the range voltage will contains about 2000 kilo volts. And the next one if you see so here types of lightning strokes. So, there are two different types of lightning strokes are there the first one is direct stroke and second one is indirect stroke. So, what is actually the direct stroke? So, in the direct stroke the lightning discharge that is directly from the cloud to the subject to equipment. So, directly which will going to be forms on the equipment that equipment the tallest equipment which you are having in the power system is only the transmission line or a overhead line I can consider. So, on the overhead line it is going to be directly false. So, how it is going to be how the current path 
whatever the lightning stroke is there, that lightning stroke having the current which is in the range of 10 kilo amps to 90 kilo amps, how this current path is going to be how means from the line through the transmit through the insulators and through the transmission poles and through the to the ground. That means through the insulators, transmission poles and to the ground it will reaches. So, the old over voltage set up due to the stroke may be a large enough to flash over this path directly to the ground that will that means it will provide the low resistance path for the over voltages which are set up by the lightning stroke that is a direct stroke. So, here direct strokes are subdivided into two that is first one is stroke A next one is stroke B. The stroke A is nothing but what we have studied till now is the there is a charged cloud is there that is positively charged cloud here let us consider here so that positively charged clouds when they, that is isolated or separated from the other clouds then that is going to be discharged when it is going to be reaches the such an high potential. So, when it is reaches the such an high potential means it is going to be discharged to the ground and that is directly falls on the transmission lines and then that transmission line will send the charge to the ground through transmission poles. And next we are having the stroke B. What is actually the stroke B? So, in the stroke B let us consider there are 3 clouds are there. So, that 3 clouds will contain the different charges. So, let us consider here cloud P contains a positive charge and cloud Q contains a negative charge and cloud R contains a positive charge. So, let us consider this cloud Q and R bond together, they are bond together. So, when the cloud P comes nearer to the cloud Q, then what happens means these two clouds are going to be discharged and these two clouds that is P and Q will having the negative or opposite charges. So, will have the opposite charges means they are going to be discharged, then this P and Q clouds are going to be, there are two clouds are there P and Q clouds. So, those P and Q clouds are going to be disappears because they are going to be discharged and they are going to be disappears only are going to have the cloud R. So, this cloud R is going to be separated or isolated from the other clouds. So, when this cloud R is going to be as isolated then that cloud when this cloud R is going to be reaches such an high potential then that is going to be discharged then that is going to be falls on the transmission line that will provide a low resistance path through insulators and transmission poles which will reaches to the ground. So, that is stroke B. Next if you see indirect stroke, so here indirect stroke is nothing but it is indirectly falls on the transmission lines. So, indirect stroke here let us consider there is a positively charged cloud on the transmission line above the transmission line you are having the positively charged cloud. So, exactly under that positively charged cloud there are some negative charges are going to be induced because of the electrostatic induction electrostatic induction. So, here whatever the air gap that is air is there in between the cloud and transmission line whatever the air is there that air is acts as a dielectric medium and here that positively charged cloud will induce the electrostatic in because of the electrostatic induction it will induce a negatively charge exactly right under the cloud. So, that means exactly right under the cloud you are going to have the negative charge. So, far away from that place you are going to have the positive charge. So, these positive charges starts this start starts moving towards the ground that means they are going to be discharged to the ground through insulators and to the through the transmission poles and to the ground. So, these positively charges are going to be discharges and when this positively charged cloud is going to be increases or reaches to such an high potential then that is going to be what happens here that positively charged cloud is going to be discharged to the neighboring cloud or discharged to the here transmission lines or which is going to be false on the transmission lines. So, then what happens? So, here that positively charged cloud is going to be discharged then you are going to have only negatively charges. So, that negative charges are going to be moves towards the both the sides of the transmission poles. So, that means towards the two directions both the directions it is going to be moves as a traveling waves. 
so when this moves as a traveling waves which will increase the voltages which will increase the voltages in the power system and the transmission lines will increase the voltages when that negatively charged when that negatively charged ions are going to be moves towards the two ends of the transmission line they are going to be discharged through the insulators and through the transmission lines transmission poles and to the ground it is going to be discharges but this will produce as a over voltages this is nothing but indirect stroke this is nothing but an indirect stroke so here if you see the harmful effects of this lightning the voltages if you see the lightning will contains the voltages in the range of 2000 kilo volts and it is only reaches the 2000 kilo volts from zero value it will takes only 1 microsecond from zero value to peak value that is around 2000 kilo volts it will reach only in 1 microseconds and it is going to be decays to half of the peak value around for 1 1000 kilo volts it will only takes around 5 microseconds within small duration of time it is going to be increases a large value of voltage so that is what the large value of, and also lightning contains large amount of the currents that is in the range of 10 kilo amps to 90 kilo amps right it is very very huge amount of current so if we see the harmful effects first the traveling waves which are produced due to lightning surge will flash over the insulators and these may even break the poles that means even they are damage the poles and the next one if we see if the traveling waves produced due to lightning and this lightning hit the windings of the transformer or it may hit the windings of the generator so let us consider there is a generator that will contains 11 kv of rated voltage and there are windings are there inside the generator so if this lightning of around 2000 kilo volts reaches the windings of a generator then that will damage the insulation insulation of the windings of a generator if that insulation is going to be damages then that will form some or that will causes for the formation of the arc in the windings because the lightning will have a large amount of the currents that currents will cause for the formation of the arc so even though this lightning is going to be disappears within very short duration of time even though after the disappearance of this lightning there is a arc is going to be continuously present because of the normal system voltage so that normal system voltage is sufficient to maintain that arc and that will continuously present and that will continuously damage the successive equipments which are connected in the connected to the generator so here that means this lightning will also damage considerable damage for the generators as well as transformers and the next one is if the arc is initiated in any part of the power system by the lightning stroke this arc will set up a disturbing oscillations in the line and this may damage the other equipments which are connected to the line so if we see the summary of this lecture so here in this we have seen that it has been found that 87% of the strokes which are result from negatively charged clouds and only 13% which are originate from positively charged clouds so negatively charged clouds are going to be forms because of the smaller drops of water and positively charged clouds which are going to be forms because of the larger drops of water right next if you see the lightning discharge which may have the currents in the range of 10 kilo amps to 90 kilo amps and the voltages in the range of 2000 kilo volts and traveling waves produced due to lightning surge will cause severe damage to the power system equipment so it is going to be damage to the power system right so thank you everyone thank you for listening this class